Hello and welcome to another video lecture from MrWatkins.com. I am Mr. Watkins and we will be doing, this video is on the nervous system, uh, the basic division of the nervous system, as well as the functional organization of the nervous system. So it should be one of the first videos that you need to watch. So the nervous system, the nervous system is divided into two broad categories. We have what's called the central nervous system and we refer to that as the CNS and then you have the peripheral nervous system. Now the central nervous system um, is the brain and the spinal cord. That's it. It's the brain and the spinal cord. There are um, other tissues associated, but it's just the, the brain and the spinal cord here. Okay. Now, the peripheral nervous system, uh, it is all the cranial nerves and all the spinal nerves. So, you need to think about this, that you've got your brain, and there are neurons, cells that are connected together there. They go into um, the spine there at the bottom of the very primitive part of your brain. And then those nerve fibers, those tracks run down that spine. And then up in the brain, as well as along the uh, those primitive parts of the brain, and then down on the spinal cord, the fibers will shoot out, will go out. Um, and that's what sends that signal or picks up a signal from the rest of the body from your arms and legs and they will actually track all the way down and through your entire system. Um, the nervous, peripheral nervous system is also called the PNS and it's divided into two uh, categories and you have a, an afferent division and you have a uh, efferent division. You know, efferent, uh, think of effort. It's the motor side, if you will. Typically, we're looking at things that uh, affect a muscle in this point. The afferent is going to be your uh, sensory side. And it's going to be, an, it's gonna be uh, the signal is going to be coming to the central nervous system. So this afferent sends a signal to the central nervous system where the efferent takes the signal away from the central nervous system. This is this will affect your uh, what we call your somatic uh, afferent parts, your somatic being the the body pieces and um, the visceral meaning basically your gut whereas the efferent or motor side is really more muscle. Now with efferent we divide that into two categories as well. We divide it into autonomic This is not under conscious control. It's, it's voluntary. This is uh, motor output to like cardiac muscles and smooth muscles and glands. We'll talk about that in a minute. We also have, again, another somatic part. And this somatic is under your conscious control. Uh, these are going to be things like uh, your skeletal muscles. This is what this is going to affect, is the skeletal muscles. So you want to reach for a cup to take a drink. Your efferent side, that motor neuron, is what's going to um, send the signal from a coordinated integration in your brain out to reach and pick up that uh, cup so that you can pick that up. And that is somatic. It's under, con con uh, under conscious control. Excuse me. Now, under the autonomic, which is not under conscious control, your motor output then, this is going to be for like cardiac muscle, so your heart muscle, uh, smooth muscles like the peristalsis in uh, your internal, uh, excuse me, in your uh, digestive system, like the small intestines and the large intestines. And we can, um, we can divide this up, this autonomic up, into two divisions. And we have a division that is called the sympathetic division. And we have the parasympathetic division. And these two divisions, um, they work in opposition to each other. They're, they're antagonistic. Your sympathetic, this is um, the thing that says, hey, we need to run or we need to fight. And so this is the, the fight 
or light, meaning run, uh, action there, response. So some stimulus comes in on the efferent side, it'll go through that central nervous system, come back on the efferent side, and you've some stimulus like you're at a, you know, you get scared, and you have this quickening of your heart rate, the muscles are ready um, to go, we're ready to, to run, or we're ready to stand our ground and fight at that point. Your parasympathetic, remember these are antagonistic, the parasympathetic is going to be more of you need to do digestion. Um, it's uh, repairing of, of tissue, sending a signal to repair tissues. So we typically think this is, uh, we typically think of this as being at rest. Now here's, here's kind of how that particular piece works or how we divide it out. The big thing is, is that we've got the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, the CNS and the PNS. They do work in tar harmony and they do work in tandem with each other. Um, but it's very important to understand that, that the peripheral nervous system is outside the box, if you will, outside anything that's outside the brain and the spinal cord. Now let's have a look, see, and uh, go through what the functional organization of the nervous system is going to look like. So I'm going to start off with a stimulus here for our functional organization. So I'm going to start off with a stimulus here. Some stimulus occurs. It could be any number of things. And you've got senses, there are five of them, and that's any one of those could, could fire a signal through this. So when you have some stimulus, you've got your input that comes into the system, into this uh, nervous system. So it's the functional organization of the nervous system. And that input is going to be through the peripheral nervous system. It's going to be on uh, through receptors and sensory neurons. It's going to be somatic. It could be a visceral, but it's definitely going to be the afferent side. Now, I'm going to draw uh, neurons like this. The circle is going to indicate the cell body of the neuron. This will indicate the axon, and then this is going to indicate the, synaptil, the synapse um, and that synaptic junction that we're going to have with another system. So the stimulus is going to come in, and it's going to send that signal to the central nervous system. And the central nervous system... I'm going to change colors here so that you see a difference between the two. This is going to be in the spine down here at the bottom. We have what's called the lower association centers. Where that signal gets sent right back out to a motor side. And then we're going to have a higher sensor or motor association center. But we have to have a special neuron. Let me finish drawing all these neurons in here real quick on how I want to do this so that you can can kind of see where I'm headed for this. We've got a special neuron that carries, it's an inner neuron that carries these signals. So we have to have a, a central or sensory, a central sensory pathway that's ascending. So this would be the ascending central sensory pathway that sends the signal up to the higher center, the higher sensory centers in the brain, such as Winnicki's area, such as um, the occipital load, such, such as those centers that are going to process this information. Remember that the central nervous system, and that's what all this black is, is the brain and the spinal cord. All the neurons that are black, all these neurons, these are uh, interneurons. So they're very short, well, maybe not so short, but they um, are only found in the central nervous system. Okay. Now we also have a descending track. Or a descending pathway, and it's a, a central motor pathway. And that sends that signal back out to an output side. So here's our output side. This is also peripheral nervous system. And this is efferent. So this is going to be like motor neurons. And it can be autonomic. Um, it can be uh, sympathetic or parasympathetic. 
And bottom line is, this is what sends a signal out that causes some effect on whatever uh, muscle or gland um, that we have here. So let's give an example of how this thing works. So let's say, and I've been using this example a lot, but it, it fits. We put your hand on a hot stove. So you put your hand on a hot stove, immediately you're going to pull your hand back. That input is through the in, uh, uh, peripheral nervous system. It's an afferent sent to the spine and goes to this lower association center, this lower inner neuron that's there in the spine. And we have what's called a reflex arc. So when I put my hot hand on the stove, I'm going to pull that hand away immediately. And this pathway here through this lower association right to this muscle has not gone up to the brain yet, but this pathway has caused me to pull my hand back very quickly. There's also a signal that is then sent straight up to the brain into an integration center. This whole area, this whole piece here is called integration. This whole thing I'm getting ready to box in, this is the integration. We're looking to see, is this input important? How important? Do I need to act on it? Do I need to ignore it? That's this integration piece. That's the decision piece. That's the stuff that's the frontal lobe stuff. That's the stuff that goes up right through the brain to let you, uh, you make the decision or you unconsciously brain and its functioning makes the decision on whether or not that signal needs to continue on to a muscle. So put my hand on the hot burner, immediately I'm going to pull it back. It's going to go straight through to that muscle to pull it back a little bit. The brain is going to process that going up an ascending pathway into a higher sensory center where it gets processed back down a, another descending pathway and send a, that second signal out to that muscle. Yes, pull back. And so for a reflex arc, you're actually seeing this piece as your reflex arc, but what you would see if you actually saw someone put their hand on a hot burner, you'd see them pull it back and stop and then pull it back some more and you probably get some kind of verbalization that certainly we couldn't say in school. So it'd be, it would look like Ow. And that's how this process works. Some stimulus comes in. The brain can send that signal immediately over, have some kind of reflex that occurs, but then there's also that other processing piece. The black central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, definitely integration of what this signal, this input from the stimulus, do we need to continue to, to see it or do we or to deal with it? Do we need to ignore it? Do we need to send it on to a muscle or to a gland? That's it for the nervous system.